Good morning. Welcome to worship. Let's stand and join together and sing a song about God's amazing gift, His grace to us. Let's sing. This is Amazing Grace.
morning and welcome to worship. It's great to have you here this morning. Uh, the Lord be with you. Will you bow your heads in prayer? Gracious God, we come to you today and as we continue our series on the good book, we, we thank you for your word, your word which you have spoken, which has been written down and recorded uh, for all of history. Father, we thank you for your word which is true, which brings life. So Father, as we meditate on that today, may you uh, make your word to be alive in our hearts as we look at uh, the Psalms and just uh, how close your, your presence truly is. May we experience that today. As we enter into your presence, God, we just pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive uh, all of the blessings that you have for us, that we would uh, lay everything down here uh, at your altar and go uh, forth this week just experiencing your presence afresh and anew each and every day. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, I greet everyone today. It's great to have you. I want to share a few announcements with you in regards to the ministry of the church. Um, I've been asked again by the youth ministry to announce the event at the end of the month on Friday evening, the 27th, the murder mystery dinner. It's interactive with those that are there. Great food with the Oktoberfest. I've mentioned it was a blast last year, so look at the information in the bulletin, and hopefully you'll be able to be with us. Uh, it shows you how, or there, gives you information about tickets. Uh, secondly, we are having a blood drive next Sunday, the last one we did, we had held off for a while and kind of regrouped with how we were advertising them, and we did a great job. And with all the things that are going on, we know with the natural disasters and um, events like that, the Red Cross is telling us they are in great need of donations, so we're having that next Sunday. The insert shows you how you can get connected with that. And then this Saturday, if you would like to help uh, with this, please let me know after worship. We're having our fall cleanup day from 9 to 12 this Saturday. If you can just come for an hour or so, we just go around the property and pick things up and adjust things and just make sure that we're ready uh, as winter starts to come upon us and those types of things. So if you can help us with that, please let me know. All right, uh, Ben really taught most of the new member class because I was in another Bible study. Ben, come on up. And uh, I was there for a little bit with the group. We have 11 people coming into membership today for our October class. I know all of them can't be here with us today, but um, I'm going to still call all of their names. Come on up to the front of the sanctuary steps when I call out your name. Susan Alt. Where's Susan? Is she here today? Okay. James uh, and Judy Benzer. There they are. Come on up. Raphael Garcia. There's Raphael. Benzers, you all can just come on right up here. James Harbold. Is James here today? I wasn't at the orientation with Terry, so. Ashley Holland. Uh, Barbara Raleigh. I know only about six or seven can make it today. And then Linda Rothfuss. There we go. I got to say this, though. The important ones are here, right? No, just kidding. <laughs> okay, Ben, go ahead. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these brothers and sisters whom you have made your own by water and word and baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all, all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Let us share in the faith that is ours by reciting the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So I share with the members of our class, you have made public profession of your faith. We now ask you, do you intend to continue in the covenant that God made with you in holy baptism in this community of faith? To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and to share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If this be your sincere confession, it will be upon our worship screen. Please say individually, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. And people of God, do you promise to support these brothers and sisters and pray for them and their new life in Christ as they join us in fellowship here? If so, please say, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. And you may be seated. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, today we pray that you would stir up in Barbara the gift of your Holy Spirit. And we pray that you would confirm her faith and guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. All right, now I'm going to ask you, I know it's quick, but we want to get you in before you say no. I'm just kidding, all right? Go ahead and turn around and face the congregation, if you would. They're a good group that you're now part of. And let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers by sharing on the screen the written words now spoken of the welcome. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Okay, now you can see a special glow with this group because Ben did most of the teaching with them. Um, so uh, I only had about a half hour with you, but it was great the time that I did have. And we all remember, you know, when we started something new, whether it was a pastor coming or members coming to a church. Um, and so uh, leave those name tags on. We want to talk with you and greet with you, especially after service too, and do everything we can to, in the next few weeks especially to make you feel welcome. But it's great to have you in ministry and partnership in Jesus Christ, and how about if we welcome them uh, into God's family? And the peace of the Lord be with you always. So I'm going to ask you to stand, and if you would, share that peace one with another. Huh? Peace be, Peace be with you. 
Okay, I'm going to ask you to work your way back to your pew and to stay standing. Go ahead and stay standing as you work your way back to your pew. We are going to switch things around just a little. Uh, we would like to have the feature song played before the message, so we're just going to do the scripture first. Today, the scripture is alternating, so Barry will read the odd verses, and then the congregation is asked to come in on the even verses. You'll see it say congregation at the top of the slide, so let's join with Barry. Today's reading comes from the 139th Psalm, verses 1 through 14. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I rise on wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, fast. If I ask, surely the darkness will hide me and light will become night around me. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated. Well, just as we heard in our scripture today, and as Pastor Paul was sharing his message, our theme today is experiencing the closeness of God. And I think in my life, and I think if you've looked in yours, and maybe you're in this season or time now where you may feel like, you know, I don't feel that God is close. I don't feel that God is with me. Um, he feels distant. And we'd like to share a song with you that we hope is encouraging, a song that just reminds us that Jesus sees everything. He is there. He is all-knowing. And as Pastor Paul will share, he is our great comforter that will be with us. So we encourage you, especially if this is a time where you are feeling a little more distant, just to reflect on these words. This is called Jesus Sees. Your heart is hurting. 
Have you ever wondered in your life if God is close? Especially during the difficult times. Yeah, I've been very open with you about mountaintop experiences in my life as well as when I am personally or maybe our family is kind of working through the, a valley time, as Ryan said, that season of life. Whether it was when I had cancer in 2003 or because of complications of that two years later, had a stroke, thinking then I had everything in order, eating healthy, exercising, then having another TIA, and just really being frustrated with God, wondering where in the world God was. Shared with you the challenges that we have with our youngest boy, Caleb, and his special needs. And I think when we're going through difficult times, we do wonder, God, you know, where in the world are you in all of this? How involved are you in this? Are you even here? You look at our world, you see the massive shootings in Las Vegas, you see the hurricanes in Texas and Florida and Puerto Rico and the other islands and the loss of life and the conditions that people are facing. You look at the very real threat of nuclear war with North Korea. You see such polarization and hatred and animosity among groups and people in our country. We witness the lack of Christian morals and, and values. We also see more people on weekends, whether it's pro sports here, around the world, with football, soccer, or our youth sports, more people going to stadiums than people finding their way to churches. We see a lack of human respect for life. It just people will kill someone and take someone else's life so quickly. We, you know, we look at Baltimore and already 280 homicides this year. You see all these things going on in our world. You look at our world and, and, and you realize, boy, how God, how close are you? Are you involved in all of this? How involved are you? Are you even here? I experience what's going on in other people's lives. I have a funeral this afternoon, a memorial service for the young baby who passed away, who died at childbirth. And to be with that young family in a hospital around midnight a couple of weeks ago, as you take a look at things that they're experiencing and going through, and they're asking why, and they're going through that darkness, sometimes you just wonder how close God is. And it's not just during difficult times. I've seen people when the sun's shining, things are going well, an adult who great job, uh, has a home, family, kids, will come and plop themselves in my office and say, I'm just not feeling good about who I am in life. I really don't feel that God is here at all. Or especially teenagers. Sometimes our teenagers, we think everything's hunky-dory with them. They're going to school, they're studying, they're getting grades. They come to church. And all of a sudden, something happens and we didn't realize that they feel pretty empty inside. They don't feel good about themselves and, and they don't feel that God is too near to them. You ever wonder if God is close, where in the world God is, how involved he is, or even here? Well, let me tell you what I've done when I felt that way. The first thing that I've learned is this, is that when you especially go through difficult times, you have to remember that faith is something that is not based on how you feel. Because there are going to be times in your life and mine when we're on the spiritual mountaintop, other times when we're down in the valley. There are going to be times when God doesn't feel too close. He doesn't feel too real. And so faith then is during those times while continuing to trust, continuing to believe that our God is true to, to who he says he is and who he will be for us. I've learned to take comfort and strength from previous moments in my life. When I look back on other moments, and even though I didn't feel God maybe as close in those moments, but then I realize now that I look back on it, when the pain isn't as difficult, when healing has occurred, I can stand back from it from a distance a little bit. I can see that God was there the entire time, that God was there supporting, guiding, and leading me through. So oftentimes we have to remember that Faith is continuing to trust and believe that our God is who he says he is and that he will guide us through the moment that we're in, even though he may not feel like he's near. 
The second thing I've learned is in those moments, I run, cast myself onto uh, God's word. And as I do so, that's where I think we receive that reassurance, that guidance, that strength. And so where I have looked, one of my favorite scriptures is Psalm 121. I lift my eyes up to the hills from where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. You see, what we're told is that we don't ultimately depend on the things of this world. Now, there are, the thing, there are things in this world that can help us get through challenging times, but we don't ultimately depend on the things of this world. We go to the one, as we talked week one in this series, to the one who made this world, who made the heavens and the mountains and the earth. We go to the one who made everything because it is he that we can depend on for help and guidance and strength. I, the scriptures that speak to me are John chapter 14, verse 16. Jesus says to his disciples, and I will ask the Father, you know, once I leave you physically, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. Advocate means counselor or comforter. And what this reminds us of is that Jesus is, is saying to us that the Holy Spirit will be a powerful person who will be on our side. And I don't know about you, but... It's great to have God on your side, to have God with you and to be with you. Martin Luther, there's a story about him when life was overwhelming to him, when he was facing some difficult times, when he was even feeling like the devil was getting the best of him. And God didn't feel too close. And he shares that he would run in those moments to his desk and open up the drawer and hold up his baptismal certificate and say, God is here, I am baptized. I think that's a good example to go by, to run to God, to remember that we are all his children and that he is with us and among us. In John chapter 14, verse 17, Jesus says this, okay, you're given the spirit of truth. The world isn't gonna be able to see him, but you can see him. You will know him and he lives with you and will be in you. I like the idea that God is kind of walking with me, but I even like it better to know that what? That God is within me. That no matter what life brings to me, Jesus won't be cast away. He's in here. He's not going anywhere. And so we, we celebrate that Holy Spirit. What, what does the Bible say about the Holy Spirit? He not only lives in us, but he will teach us he will convict us of our sin, he will show us God's righteousness, and he will guide us in truth. Now, the Holy Spirit has been active throughout the biblical story, but in Pentecost, that spirit now is given to each one of us individually. Each of us have an intimacy with God. And like the Psalm today, David writes, God, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit, when I rise, when my thoughts are far, when I'm lying down, you are familiar with all my ways. A nice thing about God is that there are times when we don't let people know everything about us because we're not sure if they know everything about us or if they discover certain things about us, well, that might be a game breaker. That's how it always kind of was for me in dating. You know, how much do you let that person know and when do you let them know? Or maybe some things you always think that's better left unsaid. I'm never going to tell them that. But you worry if your political views or maybe your spiritual beliefs or your interests or hobbies are going to match or even your sports team. I did a wedding last year where instead of candles, they used sand for the unity candles. And she was a Ravens fan. She had purple sand and he was a Steelers fan. He had gold sand and they put them together. But that didn't what? That wasn't a game breaker for them. But the scriptures tell us God knows everything about us and nothing is a great a game breaker for God. He will still love us. He will still be there for us. We are told that God even knows in Matthew's gospel, all the hairs that are on our head. I'm making it easier for him as I get older, okay? <laughs> all right. But he loves us. He still accepts us even though he knows us completely. And the psalmist says this, where in the world can I go from your spirit? And he goes on to say, there's gonna be nowhere. 
for your right hand, your power will be there to hold me fast. We believe God is omni, right? God is omni and we connect that. That means everything. So he's omnipresent, present everywhere. And no matter what we do or where we go, and I want you to hear this, we will never be too far from God's presence. So whether it is in a church or in our home, in a room, or in a school, or behind a desk at work, or in a hospital bed, in a car, wherever we are, God is not bound by our circumstance. God is not bound by geography. Nothing is too large to keep him away from us. No matter what we face, God will be with us. So you see, I run to scripture. I cast myself on the word to remind me, even though I may not feel certain things, God still says they're true. I hope you don't get tired of hearing Romans chapter eight. Paul says, who in the world's gonna separate us from God? No hardship or trouble, persecution. He goes on, makes the list. He says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. And he says, I'm, I'm sure nor things present nor anything to come will ever be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. To me, those are comforting words of the scriptures. Believers have always faced hardships. Sometimes we face hardships just because of our belief. And believers also are not exempt from what a sinful world. We will face the things that are out there in an imperfect world. But what Paul is telling us, and I love this, he's saying impossible. It is impossible for anything that comes your way for you to be separated from the presence of Jesus Christ. And God tells you how great his love is for you and how he wants to make sure that that has occurred for you because he has lived and died for you, made you a conqueror through his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so a a scripture that I go to time and time again is in Matthew where You know, they're in the boat. Jesus is sleeping. The storm is raging on the disciples. They go down and say, don't you care for us? We're gonna die. And he comes up and he quiets the storm by saying, peace, be still. Everything's calm. And you see, when we truly understand who God is, we will realize that the one who not only controls the storms of nature can also control the storms of our heart. Jesus Christ and his power that calmed the storm will help us face the problems that we are confronted with. All we have to do is ask him. So we should never discount his help in terrible trials. It's not on the screen, but that's why I love verses that say, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. In the Psalms, it says, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. And listen to this. He will never let the righteous be shaken. What I have learned is that God loves me and is committed to me even though he knows everything about me. That God is within me, that I am intimately connected with him, that I am never too far from his presence and it is impossible to be separated from him and he will be with me in the storms of life. Is God with us on the loneliest of days? Is God with us when another person lets us down and hurts us? Is God with us? And I would even again say, especially as a young person, when we aren't feeling too good about ourselves, our self-image and our self-worth. Is God with us when that ugly temptation rears its head and comes back to us? Is God with us when we are entrenched and are grieving? When we receive a difficult diagnosis, when we have to move to a different level of care? My translation from the Bible is, you bet your bottom dollar, right? He's there. And that's why the third thing I say to you today is this. I have experienced in my life, and again, sometimes it wasn't until I look back, God has shown up every single time. God shows up. Last week, Ben talked about Moses. God showed up in a burning bush and bringing plagues to free the people from Egypt, guiding people through the Red Sea, giving them right? Guidance on how to live a loving relationship through the commandments. God showed up. David writes the Psalm today. God shows up. He says, where can I go from your spirit? Jacob wrestled with God. 
God showed up, and as Jacob, and we do this, don't we? And sometimes we need to. We, Jacob struggles with God during a difficult time in his life, and we're told then that he is blessed. God showed up. And God, through a virgin in Bethlehem, shows up in Jesus Christ to live and die for us, be raised for us so that we might have life. Our God is a God who shows up. But I want to say this to you. I've talked a lot about today God in us individually. And I don't think that can be the only aspect of who we are in faith. You see, if you need to be reminded and reassured how close God can be, it is so important for you to gather with other believers and to be with other believers in worship to celebrate God's presence here as we're doing today. If your walk with God is more of an individual walk or just sort of a private piety of solitude, you're gonna be missing out. And I say this today because what I've seen in ministry and I've done it myself, when it's difficult in life, sometimes we try to go it alone. Just us or maybe just us and God. When we face those difficult times, when we get knocked down and we're trying to get back up. And instead of letting other Christian people be with us and help us, what we do is we kind of cut ourselves off from people and we get behind closed doors. When we do that, some people may try to, well, eat the problem away. Others may try to starve the problem away. Some people may try to drink the problem away. Others may try to medicate the problem away. And oftentimes, you know what we're tempted to do? To stay away from church, right? When we can't pull it together, we withdraw. And it's so tempting to do that. But it's especially in those times that we need to be around other brothers and sisters. We need to be around church people and put ourselves in the presence of God with them. And I've seen how God has used other believers to work in and through people's lives, through their prayers, through their help, through their guidance. I'd never want to say anything that's against the teachings of our church, but I, I do want to say this today. The church, Lutheran church has two sacraments, baptism and communion. God can be anywhere, but those are sacraments because God promises to be there in a very personal, powerful way. But I really almost believe you might not want to tape this and send it to the bishop. I really believe that there's almost a third sacrament in the church. And that is, I believe that God comes to us in the most powerful, personal, even sacramental way as he uses people as an instrument of his will to minister to us. I see that so often. But what happens is, is when we're going through difficult times, we, we might want to push them away or maybe because of our grieving and our hurting, we're not really looking for who God is putting there, right, to be for us. Because when someone else is there and they're a fellow Christian reaching out and God's working through them because they're there, guess what? God is there. And so to me, I think it's a reminder, let's keep our eyes open for the people God places in our life, but also let's keep our eyes open if God is asking us to go to someone. Because when we go to them, guess who goes with us? God goes with us to be with them. And so what I'm saying to you, let's show up for other people. Because when we show up, God shows up. So when I went to visit the family, the young couple who lost a baby who had gone full term and there were no problems, but then the baby passed away. 28 years of ministry, I'm telling you, you, you are lost for words, just lost. And so you bless the baby, you're there with the family, everybody's there, you stay for a good while. I'm walking out about midnight and the nurse is taking me through uh, to take me out and I really didn't feel too good about it. I didn't feel like, gosh, I don't know if I really said anything or did anything that helped them. And God placed that nurse in my life. She kind of gave me some encouragement. She said, you know, you really helped them tonight. And she says this to me. She says, I went through the same exact thing some years ago, I lost a child. And the minister who came to me, he really tried, but I didn't know him at all. You know those people. And I'm gonna tell you, you are really a comfort to them. 
well, this isn't about me. So that, you know, that was God saying, all right, come on, stay the course. It's not you, Paul. It's about God, how God can work through you. All right, stay the course, trust in him. But then I thought to myself, as she would go back, I said to her, wow, what, what a support you're gonna be to them. And she said, that's why I do this. That's why I'm a nurse in this unit. I don't think it was an accident that God had her that night there and she would go back and be able to share her experience and share really a ministry with that couple. And since I've met with that couple, the service we're doing today, they have told me what a powerful support that nurse was to them. She was God to them. When I look at Las Vegas, you know, I see such evil shooting bullets down and killing people and people running for their lives. But you hear stories of people who stayed to try to protect and help people or people running towards the trouble to help people. To me, that's an example of God showing up. When you hear about the people who've been affected by the hurricanes and you see the amount of food and water and the amount of assistance that's being provided by people going to those places when they're there, you see, to me, that's God showing up. And so I just wanna say to you today, look, we're gonna have the valleys and we're gonna have the mountaintops, especially when you go through the valleys, continue to trust. Even when it doesn't feel like God is near, continue to trust. Go to his word and be reassured by it, go to his word. And when you wonder if God is close, remember folks, he's gonna show up, he's gonna show up. His word tells us that he will and that he does. And so worship him and look for him and be open to the people that he places in your life. I lift my eyes up into the hills from where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let's stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your grace. We pray no matter what we're going through, the good and the bad, the ups and the downs, that you would help us to sustain in our trust in you. As we follow you, Lord, provide the healing and the strength, the reassurance and the encouragement that each one of us, no matter where we are right now in our lives, that we need. And may that empower us, Lord, not just to trust you, but even to follow you in a more faithful way. And help us to be instruments of your will so that you may minister to others, certainly in and through us. Amen. Gasping their dance within your breath. Time runs its race within your head. My mind runs wild to comprehend. But no mind on earth could understand. Your ways are higher, your thoughts are wilder. Love came like madness, poured out in blood wash romance. It makes no sense, but this is grace. And I know you're with me. your voice be all I hear now. Spirit, breathe like the wind, come have your way. Cause I know you're in this place. i
Faith makes a fool of what makes sense But grace found my heart where logic ends And when justice called for all my debts The friend of sinners came instead Your way your ways are higher, your thoughts are wilder, and love came like madness, poured out in blood wash romance, it makes no sense but this is grace, and I know you're with me in this place, let's sing it out, here now. is to know that you are here now still my heart let your voice be all i hear now spirit breathe like the wind come have your way because i know that you are here so gotta know that you are here now fix my eyes on the things that i can't see now and all i see is the glory of your name jesus cause i know that you your voice be all I hear now. Fix my eyes on the things that I can't see now. Spirit, breathe like the wind, come have your way. Oh, cause I know that things that I can't see now. Spirit, breathe like the wind, come have your way. Because I know that you are here. Now with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Gracious Father, we thank you for your love, for your faithfulness. Keep us strong in our faith, and courageous in our witness, and compassionate to one another. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit, the love of Christ, that we can stand strong in the face of persecution, be constant in the proclamation of the gospel, and always be true to your word. Lord, as we witness the evil that's in the world right now, the disasters, the blatant sin that is so full, uh, your world is so full of, we wonder if your return is close. God, until Christ returns, we pray that you would instill in us compassion to reach out, to care for those who are lost, who are in need of your grace, those who are sick, and those who are in need of any kind of aid that we can give them. We pray for wisdom and, and sound judgment for our president, for all of our leaders. We pray for that you, the Prince of Peace, Jesus, would open the hearts and minds of those who you have put into place in those positions. God, we pray for our servicemen and women, for our police officers, our EMTs, our first responders. Keep them safe and instill with each of us uh, a love for you and for our nation. Lord, we pray especially this morning for those who are dealing with the aftermath of 
all of the murders, the storms, the earthquakes, everything that's been going on in this world, things that have taken lives and destroyed homes and uh, employment. And we just pray for healing and for hope. Lord, we, we pray for the families of those who have lost loved ones this past week. We lift up especially the family of Frances Bellmeyer, who was taken into your care. We pray for her daughter, Linda. We also pray for the Nancy Reese and her family as they grieve her passing. We pray for the family of Bianca Wiley, whose service will be held this afternoon. We pray for Donna German and her family upon the passing of her former husband, and with the family of Bill Barclou upon the passing of his father. Lord, we pray that you would grant these families and all those who grieve the hope of eternal life that is only found in Jesus Christ. We pray for healing for all those whose names are listed in our bulletin and on our prayer chains. We pray especially by name for Claiborne Norris, for Chris Dean, Jerry and Ruth Anderson, for Bob Nags and Sid Duquette, for Dwayne Parker and Miles Miller, Arlene Boyd and Pat Saunders, for Mark and Kelly Franker, Catherine, Catherine Causey and Brenda Covert, Carson Clark and Bill Lashley, for Bob Markle, for Norma Austin, and for all those whose names we now mention either silently or out loud before you. God, we know that you are present uh, in each of those circumstances and you are present with us here now. So it's into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with His favor and always grant you His peace. Amen. In this time of desperation but all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken generation There is only one salvation 
thanks for watching. Trinity Lutheran Church can be found at 1100 Philadelphia Road in Joppa, Maryland. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button. That's a thumbs up button right here on the YouTube page. And you could also be a big help to us if you go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much, and God bless.